All right, this is lesson 12, trigonometry day two, part two. How rude of my phone to say I ran out of room. <laughs> I only have like 19,000 photos. Anyways, so we know a triangle is 180. We already did this, and now we're at an octagon, which has eight angles. And if we did 1,080 divided by eight, we would get each one is 135. Can you find out what one angle of a regular pentagon would be? Okay, you would have one, two, three triangles. So 180 times three is 540. And take that 540 divided by how many angles in a pentagon? Five and that would be 108 degrees. You'll see how we're gonna use that in part three, hopefully. Okay, we just learned about the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90, which is actually built into the unit circle. If you've never learned this, um, take a deep breath and realize you're not gonna learn it all right now. But in algebra, we have in algebra, we have ordered pairs x, y. In trig, we have ordered pair cosine, sine. I had a student teacher once that taught me a fun trick. He said, the way he remembers which one's which is he says, Miss Cooper, chocolate is first. And first, not fist, but chocolate first. Everything else in the world is second. See, C or S, chocolate first. Everything else second. So when we're trying to figure these out, I hope you can see that we have a, which one's easier? The 45, let's talk about the 45. Technically here, we could make this into a triangle and we would have a right angle with the leg being the x value and this leg being the y value and our hypotenuse being the radius of the circle. And every unit circle has a radius of one. And so if that's one, if I did our 45, 45, 90 is x, x, x rad two, and we said that that hypotenuse is one and we solved, if x rad 2 equals 1 and I divide by the square root of 2, then I get x equals 1 over rad 2, but we can't leave it like that. We would have to rationalize the denominator by hitting rad 2 rad 2, which is rad 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, that's my x, rad 2 rad 2. So that's why every single one at 45 degrees angles will always be rad two over two. Okay, now this next one you could see as this way, that right here we have a 30, well, this is the 30 degree angle. This would be my right angle, so this would be the 60, or we could flippy floppy and say now this is my 60 and that's my 30, either way, it's the same triangle, just flipped there. So we've got 30, 60, 90 is x, x rad, 3 and 2x. I always make that middle one bigger because of that little guy. Anyways, again, we know that that radius is 1. So if 2x equals 1, and I divide by 2, x is 1 half. And this says 1 half rad 3 or we would just say rad three over two. So you're gonna see that one of them is rad three over two and one half. The other one is one half and rad three over two, depending on which one's the 30, oops, sorry, which one's the 30 and which one's the 60. Like I said, take a deep breath. If you didn't understand that, it's okay. Your trig teacher will walk you through that hopefully. This is kind of the whole trig all in one like quick, Cliff notes. If you don't know what cliff notes are, ask your mom and dad. They used them to get through high school and college because we didn't have Google. All right, here we go. Um, can I use color on this? No. Okay. So I can use maybe some soft colors. So right here, amplitude is whatever is in front of our sine or cosine. You've probably heard of amplitude before. If you have a awesome guitar solo, or a flute solo and marching band, they would plug an amp to it. 
okay? And so amplitude is how high and how low the wave goes. And the wave is in music. If you've ever um, played music and it, you know, you're thumping and it's like, woo, 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 right? And it like changes the, the, the how, the, the louder it is, the bigger that little wave goes. Oh, the 90s were fabulous. I'm sorry you weren't there. Okay, so amplitude, the way I can find amplitude is I can, oops, amplitude is the high number minus the low number divided by two. If we were looking at this one, we could say it was one minus negative one, which would be two over two, which is one. Or you can say this is the amplitude from the central midline to the highest point, that's my amplitude. Okay, we're not gonna get too fancy here, um, <laughs> but you do need to know at least the vertical shift. So this plus X on the end, if it says plus, excuse me, K, that means we're gonna go up. If it's minus K, we're gonna go down. Okay. And then that's the period two pi over b. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, we just need to talk about um, sine and cosine. What do they look like? So let me, right here. Okay, so sine starts in the origin. It goes up, it goes down, it goes through. Okay, cosine starts up, goes down, and ends back up. Now, if we were to continue that process through the negative, right, it's gonna go on continuously forever. We're just looking at one of its cycles or periods. You can see that sine makes an S through the origin. We turn it to the side there. Cosine makes a C around the origin. That's how we typically, in my class, tell the difference between sine and cosine. If it goes through the origin, it makes a sine, an S through the origin, that's sine. If it goes around the origin or that zero, zero point, it is cosine. So looking at number, well, this example, <laughs> is that sine or cosine? Well, we know it's sine because it's going through the origin. So we start with Y is sine, okay? Then we can see that its highest point 10 and its lowest point negative 10. Should be a negative there. So if I had 10 minus negative 10, again, that'd be 20 over two or just that 10. We can see from the midline, it is 10. And it hasn't moved up or down. It ends at two pi just like it should, so we're done. Here's a more difficult one. If you've learned this before, maybe you wanna try it. So when I'm talking about midline, I'm talking about this vertical shift up and down. Midline is finding the middle of it. So right here, if I went in one, one, two, two, three, three, we can see it right here. Here's my midline. So you can see it's been moved up two, that's plus two. Once I have my midline, I can see that right here, it is going around the origin. So I know that's cosine. I can see that it's up one, two, three, like that, and say that that's an amplitude of three, or you can do the phi, that's my highest, minus my lowest, minus negative one, and six over two is three. However you wanna do that. And then my x, and this time, this is really fancy. This is only if you've done this before. You can see it starts here and ends here at four. And so for me to find my period, I would do two pi over four. In this case, it would be one half pi, one half pi x. That's above and beyond. If you can know the three and the two, you're probably gonna get most of it right on the ACT. Here's cosine. They even introduce what about a negative, and negative means it reflects over the x-axis. Reflects over the x-axis, meaning it flips upside down. So instead of it starting up, up, it's gonna go down, down. All right, one more here if you wanna try this one out. So first we have to find the midline. We can see the midline is this plus two. Is it sine or cosine? I hope you said cosine, it's going around. So y equals cosine, what's the amplitude? Looks to me like it's just this one. Let's try it out though. We got three, 
minus one over two, two over two is one, so we could technically put a one there, sure, why not? Then, let's see here, it starts here, if it starts up, it's gonna end up, and it ends at six, two pi over six, again, this is advanced, so if you don't know this, it's okay. Um, I can reduce two six to one third, so pi over three x. So the final answer would be y equals cosine of pi over three x plus two. Alrighty. You can see on previous ones that we just talked about cosine plus two, we did not do the period. We just said three cosine of theta plus two because it's just very challenging. You know, I was gonna do another part, but since we already have two parts, let's just keep on going here. Okie dokie, Cooper. All right. So here is some more of our identities. Um, I think, personally, if I were to say zoom in and try, I would say everyone should be able to do number one, number two, number three, number four, number six, number seven, and number eight. <laughs> you should be able to do them all except for number five. Okay. Uh, most likely to be on the test would be eight and four. If I were to guess, it would be something around there. So maybe you just try four and eight. So why don't you just look at four, pause it if you need to, and try number eight, pause it if you need to. Okay, I would like you to try those before you do these with me, but um, do what you need to do. So right here we've got sine, so I'm gonna say sine, and then times cotangent. And cotangent we know is cosine over sine. So I'm gonna put this sign over one so it's easy to see what's happening here that my signs would cancel out and it would just be cosine. So that's my first answer. My next one here, I've got um, cotangent, which again is cosine over sine, but this time it had this little sign which means divided by, and then it says cosine. Well, cosine's already broken down so I'm just gonna put over one. So then I'm gonna keep it, change it, flip it. Cosine over sine times one over cosine is one over sine, which is cosecant. Number three, we have cosecant, and cosecant is one over sine, and then it says times sine, or it doesn't say times, which means it implies. Unless it says plus or minus or divide, then we know it's times, times sine over one, well, these are gonna cancel out, and we know that one divided by one is just one. Okay, going on to number four, this is the one you should have tried. Let's see how you did. You should have said cosine over one, that would keep it simple, and times tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. Here's the kind of jerk move. If you said sine, you're correct, but that's not an option. So sine is also one over cosecant. That's so rude, but that's what they did. Here's kind of an honors question. If you're not honors, just write in the answer. It'll be fine, just put in what I put in. But what they're saying is they're saying sine to the fourth plus, plus means that we can't, we would look for one of those um, Pythagorean theorem ones, but there's that doesn't look familiar. So I'm gonna divide both sides by sine squared, or I'm gonna factor out a sine squared. And what that would leave me with is sine squared. We'll keep it consistent with an x plus cosine squared. And we already know that sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And so sine squared times one is sine squared. So if you did not get that, it's okay. Just put in sine squared, it'll be fine. Actually, number six, I could totally see as a test question as well, because you're supposed to know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So one minus cosine squared is sine squared and one over sine squared would be cosecant squared. Okay, here we go. We have cosine and sine, cosine and sine, divided by tangent. And tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm gonna keep it, change it, flip it. Now obviously you're not gonna have um, markers and stuff on the ACT, but this is me just trying to show you how my brain sees it. So I've got that cosine over sine times, I'm gonna flip this, 
cosine over sine. The sines cancel out and it's cosine squared. Last one, this is one I expected you know how to do. So right here, this says we've got this sine squared divided by, and then we should recognize this as cosine squared, and we know that sine over cosine is tangent, and so it'd be squared because it's sine squared over cosine squared, which is tangent squared. Here's some trick problems for us. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. I would suggest that you take three minutes right now I want you to try to get three correct. Okay, I hope you tried it. It says, which of the followings will help me get W? So what I'm going to look for is this, tri oh, this triangle. So I know that this is my opposite and this is my hypotenuse. So the sine of W would be X over Y. D. The next one is um, kind of complicated. Let's look at it. It first asked me for the volume, which they even tell you the equation is pi r squared, but here's the jerk part, is they didn't give you the radius. They gave you the diameter. So if the diameter is 24, I can cut that in half to find out the radius is 12. Another jerk move is that they give you this picture of six feet but then they ask you, what about the water that's a depth of five feet? Isn't that so rude? Rude. Okay, so we would put in our pi 12 squared times five, which is 2,261. So pretty close to C. Ooh, I love 30. Okay, so what you're seeing is this pool from the top. Well, we know that that radius is 12. So we know this part of the zipper is 12 and we're trying to find our arc length. Remember that? Arc length. Remember it was pi over 360 times two pi r because it's the cir uh, circumference. So I've got my 45 over 360 times two pi and my radius is 12. So doing my math, I've got 45 over 360 times 2 pi times 12 and it says it's like 9.42 and I have to add that to my 12 because this is the zipper 12 and the 9.42 and so that's 21.4 something which is pretty close to 22. Number 31 you have two I'm not going to read through all this but you have two well hold on which one is this? Both hoses have been working for 12 hours to fill the pool. They got to the fort, so they're both working for 12 hours, and then the faster one stopped working. So first of all, we're filling up a pool, which means it can't be B, and it can't be D. C says it just filled it up. That's not what happened. Something happened to that faster flowing hose, and so you have to know which what these slopes mean. This slope right here is going up slowly, and then it goes fast. This one is filling up fast, and then it's slowing down. Well, if we're going from two hoses to one, it's gotta be this guy. Last one, the directions for assembling the pool stated in the ladder. Oh, we're back over here to this ladder. So all of these go here, very important. And it says that the ladder must be at an angle of 75 degrees. And here they even have the picture. So I'm just gonna draw it over here again and I get 75. And it says, which of the following expresses the tangent in the blah, 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 that the bottom ladder should be placed? Oh, so we're trying to find this bottom of the ladder to place from the edge of the pool. And then you have to look back here at this picture to find out, oh, that's six foot right there. Okay, so from my angle, that's my opposite, nothing at the hypotenuse, and my adjacent. So from Sokotoa, that's O and A, so I've got tangent of 75 is six over X. So first of all, anything that's not tangent, well, that didn't reduce much, huh? I see it all. Okay, well, I'm not seeing this. It's wanting me to solve, so I would have to times by X and give me X tangent 75 equals six, and then I would have to divide both sides by tangent of 75. Sometimes it's easier to see than that, but that one it was not. It should have been F. Okay, next page. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. 
Again, I would give yourself three minutes. I want you to try to t stop, pause, try it for three minutes. Okay, I hope you did, here we are. So what we have here is we have two triangles and they're trying to find out which one, for the triangles below, which of these ratios would be, have to be equivalent if the perimeter of ABCD is perimeter. So they're saying that these are equivalent. Okay, so we have this triangle where this one's the 30, and if that's 30 and 90, this one has to be 60. And then we have this triangle, which if that's 60, 90, this one has to be 30. So do you see, I could like rotate it, I could turn this guy like that, okay? So would A, B, A to B, that's 30 to 90, would that be equivalent to A, D, 30 to 90? Yeah, you, you could work through the rest of those and figure it out. 45, here's the one we were talking about. They want X. And this is what's so wrong for my Utah students is you haven't dealt with this enough to say, I am comfortable with this. But because you're looking at it you're like, I don't know enough about this. Well, first of all, they say it's regular, which tells me all the angles are the same. And then it says, well, they don't have to say anything else. That implies all, everything. So here's my, Pentagon. We're just going to deal with this first. Okay, so again, I know I can cut right here and I can see one, two, three. So I've got 180 times three. Oh, sorry. I'm going to give bad info here. That's 540. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five angles. When I divide by five, each one of those is 108. So what that tells me is that this is 108 and this is 108. And I know that this is a straight line. So if I do 180 minus 108, I know that this one's 72 and I know this one's 72. But get this, here's a triangle and we're trying to find out what X is. And we know that a full triangle is 180, so I can subtract that 72 and 72 and I'm gonna get that 36. Okay, looking at 55, it's asking me about amplitudes. Do you see it? So looking right here, we can see that um, it's saying that Y1 has A1. Well, here's Y1, and we can see that that is much larger than my Y2's amplitude. So A1 is bigger then that A2, and of course that's all bigger than zero. So that's why my answer is B. 56, I hope you knew how to do this one. So fun if you get it. Okay, I'm a nerd, it's true. So I've got one minus cosine squared, which is sine squared. But look, sine squared and square root, canceled out. What's sine divided by sine? Sine divided by sine is one. Right here, one minus sine squared we know is cosine squared. Those would cancel out. And cosine over cosine is one. One plus one is two. Isn't that so neat? Oh, super neat. <laughs> oh, I'm nerding out. Okay, so this last one is less geometry than like we're used to seeing, but it's there. It's part of geometry. It's saying that X prime will be the image of X. So we're gonna take this X and we're gonna reflect it over what, so reflection means equidistant. So if this is right here, it's gonna be over here. If this is angle, uh, length Y, this would be length Y. If this is length Z, this is length Z. And then it says, what is the parameter of X prime y, x, and z. So they're saying, what's the perimeter? Well, you would say y and y and z and z. That's the perimeter. But that's not an option. It just isn't. Now notice that there's nothing about the x's in here. So anything with an x is automatically gone. So, oh, yep, there we go. We had two y's and two z's or two y plus z. Okay, moving on, we got just a little bit more trig questions here. You can see we have one, two, three. Um, I would suggest that you take two minutes. Try to get two right. 
All right, you don't need any of it, this information, because all it's asking us is what is BC? So right here, if I know that that's my opposite and my hypotenuse, I know that sine of 60 is my opposite, x over eight. And when I multiply by eight on both sides, when I do eight sine 60, I get 6.9, which is D. Okay, two can be done algebraically or geometrically. So here we go. If I did this algebraically, I would know that tangent is sine divided by cosine. So if I did 12 thirteenths divided by 5 thirteenths, keep it, change it, flip it, I'd get 12 thirteenths times 13 fifths or 12 fifths. Some of you may have said, Miss Cooper, I drew a symbol right here where I said, here's theta. And I said that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this is 12 over 13. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which makes this 5. And so if I wanted tangent, I know that's opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent would also be 12 fifths. However you see it, it's great with me. So this next one, we talked about it being um, the unit circle. We said if the, one of them is one half, like in that 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90 is x, x, rad 3, and 2x. If that's one half, it would be rad 3 over 2. And last one. Again, give yourself two minutes. So this one is asking me for right here, this little distance. So I know this is my opposite and my uh, adjacent. So I know I'm looking for tangent of 57 is 1.3 over x. Look, not tangent, not tangent, not tangent. So it's gonna be either C or E. If we can just narrow it down, that would be great. Multiply by x, I get x times tangent of 57 equals 1.3. And then I would have to divide by tangent of 57 on both, which is why it's C, not E. Okay, this one says, which one is sine? So first of all, we would want it to go through the origin. And it doesn't say anything about moving up or down, so we're not going to say that, not that, not that. So now we're down to A or C. And it says between 0 and 6.28, and they both have that 6.28. And then it says where A is a constant, which one? <clears throat> so right here, the amplitude um, is how far up? So this one would be Y equals, my goodness, so many texts. Y equals 3 sine of X. And this one would be Y equals... Um, one sign, but this would be one, two, three, or two pi over six, so pi thirds x. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just talking about amplitude, so there's no, am no amplitude there. I'm guessing, well, the answer is A. But that's my best reason of why there's a constant there. All right, last one. What's the tangent of A? So here's my angle. This is opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm looking for sine. Oh, nope. I want tangent. They're not even letting me. So I'd have to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. X squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. I have to use 13 as my hypotenuse. And I subtract 12 squared. I get x squared equals 25, and so this one's 5. That was tricky, because they're wanting tangent, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so I'd have to do 12 over 5, which is why it's A. Thank you for your time.